In this video we are going to take a look at a live trade example in the Australian dollar 15 minute time frame. This is a trade that involves a great deal of organic price action reading to formulate the correct trading context that led to the open position you see in the chart. We are also going to look at an interesting and advanced way to pinpoint market extremes using a few notions about frequency lines and Newton's third law of motion. From number 1 to number 4, we can see that price action started to create lower highs and lower lows. As you can see, defining the major and minor flows in this chart is not so straightforward, and right before number 2 there was an expanding pivot formation in the minor flow. This is the sort of thing that makes it difficult to move past this first moment of the analysis. One thing that helps in this situation is to try to zoom out a little bit and try to see the bigger picture of the market. Observe that around high number 3 is already possible to draw a horizontal frequency line to catch the frequency of those tails in that area. This same frequency line coincides with the point of ignition of the market vector between number 3 and 4. In number 4, since the market broke the low number 2 with a good margin, we can call high number 3 a solid market structure. From number 4 onwards, we see the buyers regaining their strength and moving the market up to the high number 3 level again. Number 5 would be the obvious short trade opportunity in this chart. We have a very good and textbook perfect context in this area. We have a good place to put a stop loss order above the solid structure number 3, we have a meaningful line that points to a precise level where we can trigger a trade, and we also have the notion of downward trend in our favor. Take a moment to observe how the minor flow collides with the major flow in number 5. Our major flow that is composed by the extremes marked by the numbers collide with the minor flow in between the numbers. Observe that in the market vector between 4 and 5, we have a minor flow going upwards until it hits the level of the frequency line drawn around high number 3, which should mark a precise level in which those sellers should appear again if this is indeed a downward trend. However, this is not the place where the sell position was triggered in the chart. The short trade you see was opened in a later opportunity that could only be seen if you were aware of how Newtonian lines can pinpoint the market extremes. If you know how to do that, you can use both major and minor flows to enter positions in the market near the market edges. To detect such market extremes, we need to align a few different ideas like frequency lines and action and reaction lines that are derived from Newton's third law of motion, hence the term Newtonian lines. In this chart you can see two down sloping black lines. The first line was drawn connecting the high number 1 with the frequency found in high number 5. That displays a very specific angle that was later transposed to low number 4, which was the lowest low in this piece of price action. Observe also that numbers 1 and 5 represent the outer borders of this piece of price action as if we were trying to mark a channel in price. Observe that right after number 5, price immediately started to create minor lower highs and lower lows in the number 6 through 9. The trade you see in this chart was opened when price touched the sloped frequency line in candle 9. This is considered to be a secondary entry, but it is still respecting the overall context of the market, and it is still respecting the outer boundary of the market that is being displayed by the sloped frequency line. However, sometimes it can be a bit scary triggering a trade like this when price is touching that line and the candle is not yet fully formed. In that case you can take a more conservative approach, and you can wait for further clues. Notice that after candle 9, price created an inside candle. This should be your last clue to trigger a trade at the open of the next candlestick. This would be a less precise entry, but still precise enough to produce a good trade. The stop loss was placed above high number 5, which seems to be the most secure and precise place to put a stop loss order since we are relying on those sellers from the frequency line that was drawn around number 3. The target of this trade is a little bit advanced as well, and it makes use of the reaction line that can be derived from these two downward sloping black lines that we already see in the chart. As you can tell already, the sloping line that cuts the low number 4 is called the action line. We can measure the distance between the original frequency line and this action line to give us a measurement of what we are going to extend lower in the chart and call the reaction line. Based on Newton's third law of motion that states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction, we measure the precise distance between the original frequency and its first action with a vertical red line. We extend this distance further down in the chart to show us the reaction line that is a third extrapolation of the frequencies found in the highs number 1 and 5, and in the low number 4. 
If the market has any sort of underlying symmetry going on, price will respect these lines despite the fact that a tiny minority of people can actually see them. This is called the paradox of meaningful lines, and it will be explained in the Newtonian Trading Strategy video course. Our target for this trade is dynamic, and it will follow the reaction frequency. Notice that there is an advantage of using a dynamic target because, theoretically, the longer we expose ourselves in the chart, the lower the target will be, and therefore, the larger the reward. Let's see how the market develops. As you can see here, our dynamic target was hit almost perfectly at the reaction frequency. Look at how price respects these levels, and immediately after it touched it, the market started retracing. This is a good example of how precise you can get by using meaningful lines on the chart. That's it for this video. Don't forget to click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave your feedback below. Don't forget to check out the Fractal Flow Strategy Store as well. Thank you for watching.